I wasn't expecting it to be this bad. That looks pretty rough. Well, I finally got around to doing my water heater maintenance. Yeah, but look at this. Do you think maybe he waited a little too long on this project? Well, I say better late than never. Okay. Now we bought this 2017 Grand Design Solitude 310GK about a year ago, and I had originally intended to change the anode and descale the tank right away, knowing that the previous owners had probably never done it. But seriously, you guys know that this is the DIY guy, and I'm very lucky that he can do all this kind of stuff because I'm certainly not going to do it. Now I decided to do a video on it because I do it just a little differently than you're gonna see in other videos. Now most people siphon vinegar into the tank through the Nautilus system. I prefer to use my own little DIY device here to pour the vinegar directly into the water tank and that's what I'm gonna show in this video. You know Larry always has to put his little Larry touch on everything. Welcome back, glad you guys are here, but if you just found us, I'm Alice. And I'm Larry. And we're downsizing makes sense like the penny. We are two 50 something empty nesters who went full time mid February in this grand design with our two pups because we wanted to live life more deliberately. So why should you perform RV water heater maintenance yearly? Well, changing the anode prolongs the life of your RV water tank by reducing the effects of corrosion. Now the anode is designed to sacrifice itself so that it corrodes instead of your tank and the heating elements. Secondly, cleaning and descaling helps increase the efficiency of the tank by helping the heating elements work better. Now, have you ever noticed when you turn on the hot water in the shower and you get like a funky smell? Well, all those calcium deposits hanging out in there are smelly and they create a great environment for bacteria, which also can really stink. I'm going to go through some of the tools and supplies you'll need to do this cleaning and anode changing. First, you're going to need a 1 and 1 16th inch socket to loosen the anode and put it back in again. Now, if you don't have this big socket, because that is a big socket, you can actually use a wrench. It doesn't have to be on there very tight, but it's just hard to get in there with just a regular crescent wrench. Next, of course, you're going to need a new anode to replace the nasty corroded one. You're also going to need some Teflon tape to wrap around the threads to make a tight seal when you put it back in. Now it's really helpful to have one of these cleaning wands when you are cleaning out the tank and trying to get all that calcium scale out of there. This wand really helps wash that out of the tank. Next, in my solution here, you're going to need about two feet of three quarter inch pipe, a three quarter inch elbow, and a three quarter inch threads to three quarter inch pipe connection. And the way this goes together, the short piece connects to my three quarter inch, connects to the elbow, and that this goes in there like that. It doesn't have to be glued, it just can be pressed together. And we're going to screw this into this opening and then pour the vinegar right in there. Now it's really helpful to have a funnel to finish it off to go on top like that. Of course, you're also going to need some vinegar. I have six gallons of distilled white vinegar here. I have a 12 gallon RV water heater that gives me a 50% dilution when descaling the tank. I'm going to let that sit overnight for about 12 hours. First, you want to turn off the gas and electric going to your water heater. Turn them off in the panel and turn off the electric breaker in your breaker panel. You're going to want to let the water cool for quite a bit. You can check it in the kitchen sink to make sure it's nice and cool. I checked mine out at the Nautilus shower extension and made sure it was nice and cool before I got started. You're also going to want to turn off the water. You can either turn it off at the spigot or if you've got a Nautilus, you can turn off the bypass in the Nautilus. Now speaking of the Nautilus, if you've got one, get in there behind that Nautilus and see where all those bypass switches and hoses go to. I actually labeled all of mine. Next, you're going to remove the cover from your water heater. Just rotate the tab and pull the cover off. Now it's a really good idea to protect your sidewall. Just use a piece of duct tape and a plastic bag to protect it. Now you'll see in the video that I didn't do this, but I wish I had. The vinegar can be very acidic and can damage the paint on your RV. We are going to loosen this up.
Make sure there's no gas, no pressure. And here it comes. Okay, I wasn't expecting it to be this bad, but as you can see, that looks pretty rough. Holy geez. Okay, so we've got that coming out, dripping down the side here. We've got some pretty good sized little nuggets here coming out. We're gonna try and catch all of that. Flip the valve here and You can see there's like some blockage in there. Oh yeah, there's definitely some, some little pieces in there. You see I'm filling up my bucket here. Okay, now you can see we got it fully drained. I have the water shut off over here so there's no water going to the tank. We're gonna use our little wand here to flush it out. Really, very little scale in there, really. It's coming up pretty clean now. And you can see the water down here is a little cloudy, but nothing too crazy. And it looks pretty clean in there, actually. It doesn't look too bad. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this three quarter inch fitting that goes to a three quarter inch pipe. We're gonna screw that in there doesn't have to be crazy tight, just snug. Then I'm gonna take my short piece of pipe here. I'm just gonna push that in there. We're gonna take this elbow, put the elbow on. We're gonna take this other piece of pipe. We're gonna do it here. So we're gonna fill up um, vinegar into here until it comes out of here. So I got my white vinegar here, I got a gallon of it. I'm gonna put six gallons of it in the in the um, system here. It's actually filling in there really good. So it's one gallon. The nice thing about using this method to putting the vinegar into the tank is that it can be done with any RV plumbing system. You don't have to have the Nautilus system because you're putting the vinegar directly into the tank, you're really bypassing the plumbing system. Okay. Okay, now we got six or six gallons in the tank right now, but the tank holds 12. So I got two ways to fill it. Either I can turn on the valve here and let six more gallons of water come in until it still starts coming out of here. Or I could fill six gallons of these. If they don't have a hookup to water, I could just fill up six gallons of water. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn this on and we're gonna let it fill until water starts to come out of here. And since there's no other water on in the RV, this is really the only place for the water to go is to flow through here and through here. There's a little water starting to come out of here now. And that's definitely vinegary. Okay, it's starting to come out, so I can shut that off now. Shut off my red valve, it just takes the water out of here. Okay, that's it. Now I'm just gonna let this sit overnight. I have the water tank completely full with six gallons of this white vinegar. I filled up the rest of the six gallons with water from the Nautilus. It's full to the top and we're gonna let it sit overnight and we'll see how much scale comes out tomorrow. Now, while our hot water heater was soaking in vinegar overnight, Alice and I decided to take the anode and stick it in some vinegar just to see what the vinegar does to that calcium. 
after it soaked all night, you can see it actually removed all the calcium from the anode, leaving just the magnesium behind. So the vinegar and water sat in the tank all night. Now we're going to get all that vinegar out of there and flush the tank out again. I'm going to turn it down like this. We can actually just do this so you can kind of see the water coming out. Then we're going to pull the release valve. It's nice because it keeps the side of the RV from getting all flooded out. So you can really smell that vinegar. Almost all the water is out of there now. So I'm going to unscrew this. I'm going to let that remaining water come out of there. Okay, I'm going to turn the wand here. And you can see, I can't really see anything in there. Take your time flushing out the tank. Really want to get as much of that calcium deposit scale out of the tank as possible. Now I did my best to use a flashlight and a GoPro to take a look inside the tank just to see how well the vinegar did in cleaning it up. You can see the heating element on the left there is really nice and clean. The back wall porcelain is spick and span so I think that vinegar did a great job in cleaning it up. Now here's the sediment on the right from the first flush and the sediment on the left from the second flush. Now that we have the system all flushed out, we've got all those little bits and nasty pieces out of there, we're going to reinsert our anode knot. First of all, make sure the threads on your new anode rod are nice and clean. And then you really got to make sure that these threads in here are really nice and clean. I just took my wand and really washed out the threads in there to make sure they're nice and clean. So I'm just going to take some of my Teflon tape here. And we are going to wrap it in this direction. Make sure you got a couple of good wraps there. This is that mega tape. And then we are going to reinsert our rod in here. So we're just going to put that in here like this. Get in there nice and snug. Make sure we don't cross thread it and start turning it. We're going to take our socket, our 1 and 1 16th socket in the tight position. Get it nice and snug. Okay, so now we have our anode rod reinserted. We're going to fill the tank back up. Now, it's easy with the Nautilus system, but basically what I'm going to do, instead of turning this on bypass, I'm going to rehook up my water here. So I'm going to rehook up my city water. So I'm going to turn this red valve right here from bypass so it'll start to fill water into the tank. That's it. None of the fixtures are on inside the house, so the only place the water has to go is into the tank. And we're just going to start filling that. Okay, we got water starting to come out. Here, come out with this. So let's go in and flush out the air out of the system by turning on the hot water faucets inside the RV. So I went to the kitchen sink, turned on the hot water, got all the air out of there, did the same thing to the sink in the bathroom. Last thing, just turn the power back on and get that hot water cranking again. All we have left to do is to rinse off the side of the RV, make sure we get any remaining vinegar off of it and then replace the cover. And we're all done. Well, thanks for checking out this video on how we maintain our RV water heater. Now, this technique should work on any RV suburban tank because we're putting the vinegar directly into the tank. If you've got a better way of descaling the tank and putting in the anode, please share that in the comments. If you have any other comments, you can also put them on our Instagram page and our Facebook page. Now, if you like this kind of content, we do lots of stuff like this, RV DIY, RV full-time living, campground tours, RV tours, all that kind of stuff. If you're into it, please consider subscribing to our channel to the link right down there. And I'm gonna leave a link over here somewhere for something for you to check out next. And remember, downsizing still makes sense.